Sam, I don't want to talk about this here. Look, Amanda, I'm not angry. I just want to get this out in the open. I believe you. We've been spending so much time together. Things have been better than ever between us. Now, out of the blue, you ask me if I'm thinking about Evan? Yes. Why? Because ever since you found out the truth about this guy, you haven't even said his name. That's bothering you? Yes. He happens to be Janice Frame's son. He came here to ruin my mother's life. And that makes you angry, right? Angry is an understatement. Fine. This isn't how you get angry. You don't walk around acting like everything's fine, and you definitely don't shut down like this. When you get angry, you, you, you slam doors, you, you stomp around a lot. Man, you matter to yourself. You're complaining because I'm not acting like some maniac? I'm not complaining. Well, what are you then? I'm worried. Why? Because this is how you act when you're really hurt. Okay, so I'm really hurt. Why should that worry you? Just hear me out, okay? He came here with the worst of intentions, and he lied about who he was. But he didn't follow up on those intentions. As a matter of fact, the guy saved your life. So I'm sitting here, and I'm trying to figure out why you've shut down like this. Why this hurts you so much, and it does. And you are hiding it. The only thing that I can figure out is that it's the lying that bothers you. Because Evan means more to you than you're letting on. I don't believe you're talking like this in the middle of a health spa. Amanda. Hey. You two were locked up day and night for a long time. What really happened? Hello, Rachel. Is something wrong? Your message sounded urgent. Oh, well, thank you for coming over so quickly. I'm very glad to see you. <sighs> My goodness, I'm sure you never thought you'd be able to hear me say that. No, I didn't. I was wondering if you'd heard from Daddy. You haven't heard from him at all? No, and I won't, unless... Unless what? Unless you speak to him for me. Is that why you wanted me over here? Rachel, you and I have been enemies for such a long time. Yes, we have. And it can be over. When, Iris? Look, if you could just intercede on my behalf. If you could persuade Daddy to let me back in his life, I would do anything. Anything you ask. like it was. Yeah, I know. No one has lived here? No. I left it empty. You? After I bought the building. You, you bought this? <laughs> yes. My accountant didn't think it was a real shrewd move, but, uh, see, property values are not exactly soaring around here. But I thought it was an investment. You okay, Fanny? Yes, I'm fine. You look a little shaky. Well, I guess this is the way that I look when I, uh, when I get out of prison and an old lover comes by to pick me up in his limo and bring me to the place I lived when I was 16. You never used to talk that way. Well, I'm different now. I got away from here. I... I found out who I was. I guess you're wondering why I brought you here. I really shouldn't have come here. I, I'm sure that everyone at home is wondering no, why I happened left to me. messages. No one will worry. How would you know who to leave a message with? First time I came here, I was shaking in my shoes. Ma sent over something for you two, some kind of food. The church ladies like to do for Reverend Grady. I remember. But he scared me. I was just a punk kid, and I didn't scare easy, but he, with his fire and brimstone, he could do it. But he wasn't here. 
It was just you. You opened the door and I saw your face. I couldn't remember my name. That's why I had to have this place. It's the first time I'd ever seen you. And the last. I'll never forget that night. Neither will I. In fact, it, it makes me wonder. I mean, after all the years. Why would you come back now? This is what you're making? Mm-hmm. Version B. Oh, boy. <sighs> Frankie, what do you think you're doing? I am doing you a favor. Now, just a minute. Charlene, look, I love you, but half the time you dress like an extra in the Grapes of Wrath. You have a big mouth. Oh, Charlene, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. Well, this is supposed to make me feel good. Yes. Well, it's not having the desired effect. God. Charlene, look. I know how much you care about John. Why are we talking about John? Because men like to look at attractive women. <laughs> now, John is a very handsome man. Oh, duh. <laughs> I just think that you ought to dress up for him every now and then. Or I'll all. lose him. Oh, Frank. How are things going between you? Two? Fine. Any more talk about Frankie? Da, 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 we da. talked about moving in together. It just didn't seem like the right thing. Not now. Was that your decision or his decision? Both of ours. Yeah, but you still feel the same about each other. Of right? course I do. Well, then Frankie, I'll... John is like the part of me that's been missing all these years. Hold on to him then. I don't have to do that. I don't have to have tricks up my sleeve, Frankie. He's the real thing. Haven't you ever been in love? <sighs> you know what? These are going to look incredible on you, especially you when you fix up your You don't listen to head. a thing I say, do you? You have plenty of people who listen to you. You need somebody who's going to boss you around a little oh, bit. Oh, I do? Yes, you do. <gasps> oh. So, let's stop sewing stop and cooking and go shopping. Oh. Frankie! <laughs> I didn't hurt your feelings before, did I? No. You did not need somebody to shake me up every once in a while. Yeah. Especially with Josie. Mm. You know what? <laughs> I might have actually worn this. <laughs> Jack! I don't want you to leave. What? You heard me. I don't want you to leave. You don't? No, come on, Frankie. I know the trial's over. Felicia is free. We know who shot Jason. Yeah, and that's why I came to town. But I like having you around. So think about it, huh? Stay here for a while. Boy, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It really is. It's incredible. Has anyone been able to get in touch with Mitch yet? What is he doing in Africa? Well, he's got a photo essay going on on wildlife preservation. Uh-huh. Well. He's due for a happy homecoming. Oh, he sure is. It's just too bad it has to be a Cass's expense. Yeah. I don't understand, Nicole. Oh, neither do I. Didn't she know the kind of gamble she was taking? Well, she must have realized that we were going to catch up with her sooner or later. Cass, Zach, and I were ready to do anything to reverse that conviction. Okay. Finishing touches here. And we're gonna be set. All right. Did you put the champagne in the refrigerator? I did indeed, and I put away all the groceries that I bought. Okay. <sighs> this has been such a fun day, I can't tell you. Cooking, cleaning, and shopping, this is fun for you. <laughs> it's a normal day, like a normal human being. Stacey. I did errands. I didn't believe all that garbage that they wrote in the paper about you and Derek. Oh, uh, yeah, they made it sound like I slept with the guy in order to get him to testify. They always do. I mean, I spent a lot of time with him, yeah, maybe too much time. But it's over with now, and that's that. Hip, hip, hooray. Yeah. From now on, I practice law from 9 to 5, and then I go out with my friends and try to have a good time. Good for you. Well, it sounds like I arrived at the right time. As usual, hey. as soon as all the work is done. <laughs> this place looks great. But no, I meant for Stacy's sake. Oh, what do you mean? How would you like to go out when 
other day. The last time I got mixed up in your life... You changed it. Forever. That's where he was standing when we told him we were going to get married. It was right after supper, as I recall, and he was... He was working on his clock. He was setting it. He always did that. He didn't even look at me. It was just a technique of his. I was telling him how much I love you, and he didn't even turn around. He was a very mean man. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Nobody does that to me anymore. Nobody doesn't look me in the face anymore. I built an entire boardroom where nobody can turn their back on me. A boardroom? Really? He thought he was dismissing me, annihilating me. He made me. So then you've done well, haven't you? Um, you ever hear the Lucas Agency? Is that you? Yeah. I, I turned Luke into Lucas and dropped my last name and turned my new first name into multi-million dollar business. Did you? It was easy. Even in the beginning when I was taking the big risks, I thought about that old man and you and how he didn't look at me. And I knew, I knew that money would make a difference, that money would make it so nobody, not even a preacher with his books and his Bibles, would stand between me and what I want. Luke, if I've learned one thing from, from all of this, is that you're talking in the past. Let it go. You have to, you know. You have to let it go. How can I let go of something that's been with me every day of my life? Let it go? How? How did you do it? If you did it.